Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. Alright guys, this is problem that says the rod is supported by smooth journal bearings at A, B and C and is subjected to the two forces. Find the reactions that these supports. Okay, so let's draw the reactions at A, B and C in our free body diagram. Being organized in this kind of problems is very important because it's kind of easy but it's also easy to like mess up a number. So it's important to stay organized guys. So let me just draw the X, Y, C uh, sorry this is X this is Y and this is C why did I draw it? because when I draw the reactions you always want to draw the reactions at the positive at the po uh, in the direction of the positive axis even, even though intuitively you know that the reaction is going to be in the wrong direction it's going to be in the negative axis just draw it on the positive not to mess up the signs in our later calculations so please trust me on that now if you don't get it just follow along and i'm sure you'll get it soon so you know that the journal at a has a reaction in the positive c and in the positive x you know that the journal at b has a reaction in the positive b and positive x sorry positive c and positive uh, x and it had these two have no reaction in the positive uh, y direction now the one at c is at a different position so it has a reaction in the positive x and a reaction in the positive y So these are the reactions of the bearings and these are basically all the forces that we need to find. So let's write down right up here. I, I usually do this. It's, it's a good exercise to do this. So write down what you're trying to find. I'm trying to find AX, which is this, AX, AC, let me write them all up, BX, BC, CX, and CY. There's no CZ because it has no reaction going up and down because of the position that this bearing is at. So we're trying to find AX, AC, BX, BC. And actually, I have a better idea. Sorry, I guess I'm always finding new ways to explain things, make it easier for you guys to understand. Let me write that like a table. We're trying to find the X, A, C, B, X, <clears throat> B, C, C, X, and C, Y. So, trying to make the table as neat as possible as I can, drawing on a screen. That's not that bad. And um, now we're going to try and file all these six variables with logic and equations that we know. So I'm going to write a little small. Hopefully you guys have big screens in order to be able to fit everything in one screen. So first I'm going to do the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Now in the y direction it's pretty easy because you have the 400 newton force going to the positive y direction and the cy also going to the positive y. So plus cy. So this means that CY is equal to negative 400. So let's put it here, negative 400 in the J direction because that's the Y direction, right? The reason why we put all the reactions towards the positive axis is so we don't have to be thinking about the signs. Hopefully the, you'll understand this the more problems that you do. Now. Let's do another, another equation. Sum of the forces in the C is equal to zero. Now in the C we have plus AZ plus BZ plus 600. So uh, minus AC minus BC is equal to 600. 
these just got us one handy equation. Let's call it equation one. So another one. Assuming counterclockwise is positive, sum of the moments at x is equal to zero. And it is equal to so along the x-axis, the oh, we only have two moments, I think. Let me see. Um no, from that we have the BC, which is BC, and the distance from BC to where BC is applied to the x-axis is 0.6. That's the distance from here to here. Distance from A to B. What else? Plus 1.2 times 600. The 600 is the distance from here to the x-axis, which is all the way to somewhere around here. That distance is 1.2 and it's also positive because it's trying to turn the assembly counterclockwise. And the CY, yeah, the CY is the distance from here, which actually is the distance from the distance from here. Uh, actually, that sucks, yeah, the distance from here. Let me erase that. Much better. Okay, the distance from here to the x-axis, um, which is 0.4. So plus 0.4 cy, which is also positive because it's also trying to turn the assembly. Everything's trying to turn the assembly in a counterclockwise manner. So if you solve this, you're going to get that minus 0.6 BC minus 0.4 CY is equal to 720. But check it out. We already found CY. We could plug it into here and solve for BC and we will get the answer. So let's solve for BC is equal to 720 plus 0.4 CY over negative 0.6 and we're going to plug in the negative 400 for CY and solve this equation and you get that BC is equal to minus 933.33 minus 933.33 in the this is C so this is in the K okay two four to go what else? Uh, oh, we have BC, so we could plug it into equation one. Let's plug it into equation one and solve for AC. And we're going to get that AC is equal to 333.33 in the, in the K, right? Yeah, so it's positive. Let's just put it here and we put the 333.33 in the K. Three down, three to go. So let me do, assuming counterclockwise is positive, sum of the moments in the y is equal to zero. We're going to do the moments about the y now. And that about the y, we have the 600 Newton force, which happens right here, times the distance with the y-axis, so it's the difference between the two axes I just drew. And that is equal to, uh, that is equal to 0.6. And it's trying to turn the assembly clockwise and then um, that means that it's negative then we have also the x let me draw it as best as I can so the distance from here which is the y plane to here with cx which is um, 0.4 times cx and that is also negative and all of that is equal to zero uh, so we only have one variable in this equation, which is cx, and it is equal to negative 900. So cx is minus 900 in the i direction, because x is in the i direction. Okay, so we have two more to go. S uh, assuming counterclockwise is positive, sum of the moments about the c is equal to zero, and it is equal to... bx 
times 0 0.6 because it's the distance between Bx where Bx is applied which is right here on the C plane which is 0 0.6 and it's trying to turn the whole assembly clockwise so it's negative then um, Cx times 1.2 because and it's also negative because Cx is the distance between I mean Cx times the distance between the Cx and the C plane which is 1.2 and it's trying to turn it also clockwise and then um, plus Cy times 0.6 what is Cy? Cy is trying to turn the distance between the C and Y plane. It's right here. And that is equal to 0.6. And it's trying to turn it, it's trying to turn the whole assembly that way. So it is positive. So we have Cx. We found it before. Yeah, we can plug it in. This is negative 900. And we have Cy. We found it before, it's minus 400. And we solve for Bx, and it is equal to 1400, positive. 1400, it's an x, so it's in the i direction. That is a univector, I swear. And the last but not least is the Ax, which let's do a simple sum of the forces in the x. And we get that Ax plus Bx plus Cx is equal to zero. Um, we basically plug in, well, let's solve for Ax. Ax is equal to minus Bx minus Cx. Ax is equal to uh, Bx is minus 1400. I mean, Bx is 1400 with a minus. And then Cx is positive 900 because it's negative 900 times negative it's positive so ax is equal to minus 500 minus 500 in the i and that is it so for ax we have minus 500 in the i for ac we have 333.33 in the k for bx we have 1400 in the i for bc we have minus 933.33 in the k for cx we have minus 900 in the i and for cy we have minus 400 in the j final answer for all our reactions at the supports